Happy Sunshine, family. Lunacy is back. November 11th, 2018. About quarter of 10 p.m. Pacific time. I found a really interesting web page that ties into my last video on the jury of six paperwork that was submitted in Wolfgang Halbig's case. I just found some in, in some <laughs> whoa let me back that up there a bit tripping over my tongue there's just some interesting information in this article let's just head on over right now and take a look at that why are some cases decided by only six jurors instead of 12 there's nothing magical about the number 12 except that 12-person juries enjoy a long and rich history in the law. Although informal use of juries predates the 12th century, King Henry II from 1154 to 1189 is credited with instituting the first official jury system when in 1166 he ordered that, quote, 12 lawful men, unquote, and each village would make decisions about who had committed crimes in their community. Since that time, legal systems with roots in English common law, it's the United States, Australia, Canada, etc., including 49 of the 50 states in the U.S., use a jury system to some degree, although the precise number comprising the jury used will vary from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. 49 of 50 states. Which state, which one of the 50 states doesn't use a jury system at all to some degree? Wow. In 1970, the U.S. Supreme Court approved the use of a six-person jury in the Florida criminal case ruling that Neither the language nor the history of the U.S. Constitution mandates, mandates a 12-person jury. Instead, the Supreme Court, referring to the 12-person jury as a, quote, historical accident, unquote, held that the purpose of a jury is to provide a cross-section of the community, and juries of less than 12 persons in serious felony cases do not violate that purpose or the Constitution. <clears throat> Here's the kicking kicker statement. Nevertheless, only two states in the U.S., Florida and Connecticut, allow for six-person juries for serious felony accusations. Now, what two states do I find myself talking an awful lot about on my channel? Well, with Wolfgang Halbig, he lives in Florida and he's got this action in Connecticut, so we talk about both of them. And <clears throat> Timothy Holmseth, he's got quite a few problems with uh, Florida right now. I find this very interesting that the two states that Deep, massive corruption is being uncovered in right now are two states that allow for six-person juries for serious felony accusations. There is no way in hell that six people in any community is going to provide a cross-section that's adequate unless your community is, what, seven people? <laughs> Even 12, 12 seems a stretch. You take a major metropolitan area with hundreds of thousands, even, even L.A., something the size of L.A. or New York, 12 people? Seriously? Cross-section? Are you kidding me? No way. Now let's cut that in half. Your life's on the line. You got your face in serious felony charges. Do you want a jury of 12 or do you want a jury of 6? Wow, I the more people it, 
the more eyes, the more people. That's what I want on my uh, on my jury to cut that in half. And that's only legal in two states, Florida and Connecticut. Now, I know that Wolfgang isn't facing criminal charges. He's facing civil charges, but uh, still it, it appears from the case detail website that claim for jury of six. I, I really, I really wonder if this is part of the reason why they argued so hard and apparently somebody's got some clout for bringing this back out of federal court. We can see here on July 13th of 2018, notice of removal to federal court. And then when I last talked to Wolfgang, <clears throat> it had been moved back. And now they're doing a claim for a jury of six. I mean, we looked at all the, <clears throat> the property, the real estate, in the Newton, Connecticut area that all appears to have had some sort of transaction transpire on Christmas Day, 2009. <clears throat> like that whole geographic area is part of this capstone event. And what, what are they going to what are they going to do with this jury of only six people? Are you kidding me? Who are they going to stack on that jury? Oh, we're going to take a representative cross section from the community. <clears throat> what, did their houses get paid off on Christmas Day in 2009 as well? I think when, when the jury list, God, are we ever going to know who the jurors are? That would be something to investigate real quickly. Did they get free houses on Christmas Day in 2009? Be easy for them to stack the room with or stack a jury that's only six people. And, and if even if you just have a few, they could easily use the Delphi technique during any deliberations to uh, take the weak-minded and, and, and author their own perception inside their own head for them. Wow. This, this article here, it's just a blog on WordPress, Bonnie Sutter's blog. That, I find that really interesting. We just got a, another couple paragraphs, so let's finish reading this. In Texas, both statutory and state constitutional law provides that juries will be composed of either 12 or 6 persons, depending upon the type of court which is impaneling the jury. Basically, district-level trial court cases are decided by 12-person juries, while cases from county-level trial courts, justice courts, and municipal court are decided by juries of 6. In district courts, however, the parties may agree to reduce the number of jurors to hear a particular case. What this means for criminal cases is that a felony case will be decided by a 12-person jury, while a misdemeanor case will be determined by a jury of six. Yeah, I mean, that, that seems to be a little bit more, more in line with logic and reason. So this is, this is the asterisk here from uh, King Henry's comment. King Henry II's jury system was a positive departure from the common practice of deciding guilt or in innocence during that era. Prior to this time, criminal cases were often adjudicated through, quote, trial by ordeal, end quote. In a trial by ordeal, those accused of crimes were required to undertake some type of ordeal, such as picking up a red-hot bar of iron or sticking their hands into a boiling cauldron. If their injuries from the ordeal quickly healed, that would be considered a sign from God that they were innocent. 
If not, a criminal penalty would be assessed. A textbook example of adding insult to injury. Wow. I don't know if that's true, but that's an interesting story. Okay, family. I thought you'd find that interesting. I was blown away that it only comes from Connecticut and Florida, and I guess sometimes Texas, but that's just the misdemeanor cases. We're talking serious felonies. There's only two states in the nation that will try those with six jurors, Connecticut and Florida. Wow, unreal. Like the like that Ed from the Outer Light says, we're living in mirror world. All right. If you got any email for me, lunacy, L-U-N-A-S-E-E at protonmail.com. I love you all. I'll be back soon. Bye-bye.